and welcome to another edition of the Do Good to Lead Well podcast series. I'm your host, Craig Dowden, and it's a pleasure to have you join me today. Hard to imagine that it's a brand new year, 2024, and I'm recording the first monthly solo episode. And for return listeners, as you know, each month I summarize the really interesting conversations, research, and other experiences that I've been a part of and share those observations and experiences with you. And I want to say before I start a very special thank you to everybody. The episode on the science and art of gift giving was prominently featured on Spotify before the holidays because of your ongoing support. And we had the awesome opportunity to be side by side with Stephen Colbert of The Late Late Show and was really cool in their newsletter. So thank you so, so much for your feedback and your social shares and your likes and comments. And for this opening episode of 2024, I wanted to take a more personal approach. I was recently asked to be on the Gaslight Effect podcast. And if you recall, I had the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Robin Stern, the co-founder of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence last year. We had this great conversation around gaslighting. And if you recall, gaslighting was the word of the year in 2022. And it really had me thinking about my own personal experience. And what I thought I'd do today is share almost the trajectory of a relationship that I was a part of and really had a profound impact on me. It really shaped who I am and also some of the choices that came with it. So my intention today is to really break it down, unpack it for you, if you will, so that I can fill you in on my own journey, and then some of the insights and lessons that I learned. And I won't be naming the individual. Uh, what I will be doing, however, is setting the stage. So for me, this was a very important relationship, like a critical relationship in my life. And it was one whereby that I really wanted to have a deep, authentic connection. That was so, so important to me. And it was one that I also admittedly struggled in. It was very challenging, very difficult, despite its importance. And despite my best efforts, it continually was a source of frustration for me and the other person. And it was really challenging. And it was also for me, I had lots of great relationships, meaningful relationships with other people, and yet in this one that was mission critical, it was it was straining to say the least. And it also felt incredibly one-sided. I really struggled with that. Whenever I attempted to provide feedback or challenge or what have you, it just went in the wrong, <laughs> it did not go well. And what I found was, is that I would quickly disengage. So what would happen is if I made an observation or shared something personal, around the relationship or how it was constructed, well, it was quickly dismissed or most likely to be turned around and often into a really bad argument. So what I learned from that is not to bring it up. That's essentially what I almost, I created a sense of learned helplessness. I wasn't interested in re-engaging. And so then what ended up happening was I was quite quiet I just listened for extended periods of time and I really wasn't contributing. And the fact that I was withdrawing wasn't helping. Essentially, I would dread the conversations, would be really uh, not looking forward to them in any way. And despite my interest in maintaining the relationship, I was essentially checking out. And that was difficult. It was really, really difficult for me. And I also owned my own part in that, that when I reflected on what was happening, when I reflected on my experiences with this other person, I was contributing to that dynamic because I was really passive. I wasn't actively engaged. And it really was almost, well, I'll go in, check the box and go out. Not good. And it affected me it affected my emotional 
uh, health, if you will, when it came to this other person. It really impacted my relationship because I was quite dismissive and, and really uh, uninterested in fostering it. And so I took a moment, took several moments over an extended period of time and really reflected on my core values. So what were the underlying foundational guiding beliefs that I would bring and that I do bring to my life? How I live, how I lead, how I interact with people. And upon reflection, it was pretty clear to me why going against my values were having such a profound impact. So my values, things like respect, as I mentioned earlier, I felt the relationship was incredibly one-sided. And anything that I would say to attempt to assert my own needs was met with dismissal or turned around. So that was challenging. Being authentic, I wasn't my authentic self. And in fact, I didn't like the person I was in that relationship, which is why it was so challenging for me and also really draining. And honesty. Honesty is another core value, and I wasn't living in that way. That was my responsibility. I was choosing to be dishonest by not sharing my perspective anymore, and that's on me. And so a really important realization that I had when I reflected on it, not just the consequences, also my role. And if I want to have those kinds of relationships, and I prided myself on having those kinds of relationships and honoring my core values, I needed to do something. So I decided to have a conversation, really commit to the process. And I made a commitment with myself to engage with the ultimate level of curiosity. In the past, I would either disengage quickly if I sensed any hesitation, any resistance, or conflict, I just would tap out and, and not continue, I made the commitment that I am going to stay engaged in this conversation. And I also made a commitment to myself that I would lead with curiosity. Rather than react to a statement that the other person made, and of course would often go into an argument, I wanted to continue to ask questions. My goal was could I gain as much information, as much insight as possible? And one of the challenges that I had was that I found whenever I would share something, it was met with lots of excuses. And this was challenging for me because it was, I found it virtually impossible to have a conversation around what changes we could make to the relationship, even though we both recognized it wasn't great because there was in my mind, very little, no accountability. It was just excuse after excuse after excuse. So this was the feedback that I wanted to share in the conversation. And, and as we started talking, I shared my observations on behaviors. So rather than leading with judgments about a behavior or labeling things, I shared some behaviors that I observed and as soon as I did that again, it, we started to go down the road where the other person was making excuses. So now I had the opportunity in terms of reflection, in terms of my preparation, in terms of my approach. Okay, now I'm going to leave with curiosity and lean in. So I said to the person, I said, well, you know, in the spirit of being open and honest, I want to share that when I say these things in terms of where I see opportunities for improvement in our relationship or things that I hope you could consider changing in terms of the words you use or uh, the, the, the way you frame things, that I feel like you're making excuses when you're telling me why this can happen. And so the other person reacted negatively, which I wasn't surprised, like, I'm not making excuses there's no way I'm making excuses. I can't believe you'd say I'm making excuses. And so I paused, again, reflecting on my strategy. And I said, okay, well, what are you doing? Like, help me understand what do you feel you're doing when you, when you say these things, if you're not making excuses? And the other person spoke to me and said, without any hesitation, I'm not making excuses 
I'm giving you reasons for why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I was floored by that and even asked, okay, can you help me understand what's the difference between excuses and the definition that you've provided? Like I'm giving you reasons. And their thought process was, well, excuses aren't legitimate. Reasons are legitimate. And so in their mind, there was always a legitimate reason behind whatever they were saying or whatever they were doing. And then the conversation pivoted further, whereby now, as I attempted to continue in my process of inquiry and asking lots of questions, that now it turned around and the person started to uh, attack me in terms of, well, how could you assume or how could you believe that I'm a person that makes excuses? I can't believe you would say that. And I paused for a moment and shared, well, I just wanted to talk to you about how these things affect me. And I, I was looking for ways that we could talk openly so that are there different strategies, different things that we could do. And so to improve the quality of our relationship. And then they continued on the offensive and accused me and said, well, I can't believe you would think that about me and how awful that is. And I reverted back to another key point that I wanted to make in terms of, well, I just wanted you to know how that affects me. And, and so that you would know when this happens, and then we can think about or other ways. And then the reaction after that was, well, no matter how hurt you are by my behavior, it's not nearly as hurtful as how I'm feeling right now. And so, as you can probably guess, this didn't go particularly well. At the same time, what I was very happy about was that I was able to stay grounded, stay focused on the key pieces. And I was looking to engage with this person and understand their perspective. So as the conversation ended, and I stepped away and I admittedly was disappointed, very disappointed. It didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. At the same time, I felt great around that I had honored my values and showed up in the conversation the way in which I wanted to do so, which was to be fully engaged, to be curious, and really work towards finding a, an opportunity, a pathway for us to deepen that relationship. And this started a series of reflections on my side, whereby I recognized that my values weren't being honored in this relationship. I realized that I'd have to make some difficult choices around enforcing boundaries. And as time went on, I came to the difficult conclusion. Admittedly, it was challenging for me because I really wanted this relationship to work. I had to accept the dynamics that were in place and also reflecting on a variety of different conversations I attempted to have that there was really very little, if any, progress in that way. And so this relationship, as you can probably guess, really dissolved and, and, and uh, became less and less prevalent and in fact, really not a part of my future. So what are some of the key things that I take away from that challenging experience? Because as I, as I said, I really wanted this to work. This was a relationship that was incredibly important to me. And the fact that it was dysfunctional and challenging made me even more committed to wanting to figure it out. So upon reflection, what are the three key lessons that I took out of this really unfortunate situation, because as I mentioned, I really wanted this relationship to work. And one of the first lessons that I learned was that no matter how bad that I wanted something, it was mission critical to accept reality, to understand exactly what is and what is not. And no matter how aspirational my view was, no matter how strongly I desired things to be different, they weren't. And when I looked at 
the challenges that happened, the conflicts, the arguments, the disengagement, the impact that it had on me, I realized my contribution to that, particularly in terms of I was fighting reality. It was almost like I refused to accept what was going on and acted in a way as if things had to be different and this other person had to change. And I had the right way and the only way to move forward. And the difficulty was is that the more I fought reality, the more conflict it created for me and also in the relationship and a sense of exhaustion and then eventually hopelessness around, well, what's the point? And as I said, I disengaged. And from there, what was really critical, and this was the second key point, is our core values are so vital to our mental health, our psychological health, our physiological health. When I was violating my core values of respect, authenticity, honesty, that was affecting me. It affected me in terms of my level of energy. Before the conversation with this person, I was drained mentally and physically. Before it even started, in the conversation, it was affecting me. I was acting outside of my core values, and I felt it in terms of my psychological level of engagement in the conversation, as well as physically. I was physically drained. I didn't feel good in my own body. It just felt terrible. And then honesty. I strive for the ultimate level of honesty, transparency in my coaching practice, in my speaking practice. I continually challenge the executives and teams and organizations I work with to be more open, to be more transparent, to speak up early. Early intervention is key before it becomes big. All of those things I was violating in every interaction, and that was my choice. And so accepting reality and also reflecting on my core values and positioning it within my core values. And then the last part, which was admittedly the most challenging, was to identify my boundaries. When I ran into a situation where the other person was unprepared or unable or disinterested in respecting my boundaries, respecting my values, what I was looking for. Now I had to come to the difficult decision of, well, what am I gonna do? And this was the hardest part of the whole thing was then to say, okay, if I am accepting of the situation and I am embedding it within my core values, now I have a very tough choice to make. Now, if I'm going to live and lead with my values, I have to put up a boundary. And if the other person isn't prepared to honor or respect my value, this is going to have a profound effect on our relationship. It's going to strain it even more, and perhaps end it all together. And that was a process for me. It was not easy. At the same time, I spent time reflecting on that, thinking through and feeling through every aspect of that decision and the consequences that that would have. And when I did enforce my boundaries, unfortunately, it didn't work. It didn't, it worked in terms of for me, it didn't save the relationship. And even though it was and continues to be challenging, when we have things that we want to, to, to happen, especially for relationships that we, that we honor and hold dear, to me, what was restorative, what was empowering, what built resilience, was that as I reflected on this situation, I was able to break down every step of the way and think about who I was and how I showed up. And as I left the relationship, thinking about who I was in the early and middle and even later stages, it wasn't connected to who I was. At the end, despite the challenge and despite the impact that it had, I was able to think through those pieces and have a comfort that my values do matter to me. The relationships that I hold, they 
are all about those core values of mine. And so in order to protect those values and to live them at the highest level, there are times, no matter how challenging, that we have to set boundaries to protect them. I hope you found this different solo episode valuable. And thank you so, so much for your ongoing support of the Do Good to Lead Well podcast. Please leave your comments, your observations, continue liking and sharing the episodes. Keep sending me suggestions about future guests and future topics. Until then, take care. Bye for now.